In this video, I'll talk about the Fibonacci sequence, and the most important thing is that I'll show you guys how to find the formula for it. As we know, the Fibonacci sequence is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and so on, so on, so on. For example, how can we figure out this term? Well, let's look at 8 first. You know 8 is the same as 3 plus 5, right? And to figure this out, it's the same as the sum of the previous two terms. So to do this, we just do 5 plus 8, which is going to be 13. And likewise, for this term, we just have to do 8 plus 13, and that's going to give us 21, right? And here is a small convention that I'm going to use in my video. The first number right here is going to be my zeros term. So let me indicate that this is n equal to 0, and then n equals to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, n equal to 4, n equal to 5, and so on, so on, so on. The n values here doesn't really matter. You can begin with 1 or 0, up to you, right? 0 is easier in our case. But anyway, first, I will show you guys how to write a recursive formula for the Fibonacci sequence. So to do so, I'm going to say F stands for Fibonacci. F0 is going to be 1, the first term, technically the zeroth term. It's 1. And then F1 is going to be 1 as well, right? And then anything after that, Fn, this is equal to the previous term. So that will be F of n minus 1 plus F of n minus 2. This is the previous, previous term. So once again, for 13 right here, we add 8 and 5 together. Anyway, this is the recursive formula, right? And technically, I should say this is only legit when n is greater than or equal to 2. So that's pretty easy to, to do, right? But the trouble for recursive formula is that what if I want to figure out f of 100? In order for us to figure out f 100, we have to figure out f of 99 and 98. That's not fun, right? So I will show you guys how to find the nth term formula, right? So just explicit formula based on n only. And this is how we are going to do it. Whenever you have this kind of formula right here, we'll just call this to be a formula for now. This right here is what we call the difference. So I have to spell it out D-I-F-F-E-R-E-N-C-E -E -E this time because sometimes I put D-I-F-F stands for differentiation or whatsoever, right? Anyway, this right here is called the difference equation, right? It's very similar to differential equation. This right here, I will call this to be the second order. Very similar to a second order linear differential equation, right? This is the second order difference equation. And to do this right here, it's also very similar to how to solve the second order linear differential equation. But once again, this is a difference equation. Anyway, to do this, what I'm going to do is let f of n, right? The general form we're going to use is f of n is equal to some number r to the n's power, right? So this is the idea. And what we'll do is, if you know f n is equal to r to the sum n value, f n minus 1, this is just going to be r n minus 1, and then f of n minus 2 is equal to r n minus 2. And the deal is that we're plugging all this right here into this equation, and we'll have to figure out what r is equal to. And if we end up with two different r for you, and in fact, we way off, uh, we are going to set it up accordingly, all right? But I'm not going to get into this like, in too much detail. I'll just show you guys how this is going to work. And I will do more if you guys comment down below if you are interested to see how to uh, solve, difference, uh, solve difference equation. Anyway, so here we go. I'll just put it down right here. Fn is r to the nth power, and then Fn minus 1 is that. So Rn minus 1 plus Rn minus 2 for that as well, right? And right here, what we can do is, of course, we don't want r to be 0. Otherwise, if r is 0, that's redundant. r cannot be 0 in our case, right? So what we can do is we can divide everything by r to the n, r to the n, r to the n, and then we're left with 1 equals to, you do this. If you're watching the video, you can see this right away, right? <laughs> and then I will multiply r squared on both sides. So you will have r squared equals to r to the positive first power plus 1. Put all this to the right-hand side. So Left hand side, I mean, so you have r squared minus r minus 1 equal to 0. 
and I'm going to solve for r right here. So I will use the quadratic formula, r is equal to negative b, which is negative 1 right here, plus minus square root of negative 1 for the b value, square minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 1. So it's going to be like this, all over 2 times a value, which is 1, right? And then you do this, you do that. The first one is just 1 plus minus square root of all together inside. It's going to be 5 all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, so you see we end up with two different r value. And you know beforehand it's because you have two of this r minus 1 and r minus, sorry, f of n minus 1, f n minus 2. So the f of n minus 2 is the previous, previous term, just like the second derivative, that idea, okay? But anyway, we have this two r value. Right, so I will write it down right here for you guys. R one is equal to let's put on the positive version one plus square root of five over two, and then R two is equal to one minus square root of five over two. Right, and now this is how we are going to put together and then come with the formula. Here, f n it's going to be sum number a. It's just like the c one, c two whatsoever in our differential equation, but let me just use a because I like it better, in my opinion. a times r1 to the nth power plus b times r2 to the nth power. And once again, we have two different r's values, and we just put them together. So fn is going to be a, r1 is that, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the n plus b times that 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the nth value, right? Okay, so if you would like, this is how we are going to solve for a and b. If we can do that, we are done. So, here's the deal. As you see, when n is equal to 0, we have 1. When n is equal to 1, we have 1. We are going to pick the first two conditions, and we can solve for a and b, right? This is really cool, isn't it? So, I will just write this down. When n is equal to 0, we know f1, which is, well, sorry, f0 is 1. And in that case, you have a times this, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the zeroth power, plus b times 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the zeroth power, right? And likewise, when n is equal to 1, you have f of 1, which is also equal to 1. And then you just have a. 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the first power plus b, 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the first power, just like that. Okay, as you can see right here, we have a system of equations in terms of a and b. If we can solve for a and b, we are done. done. And I wanted to solve this by elimination method. So if you look at the first equation, we know this is just going to be 1, and likewise, this is going to be 1 as well. So all in all, we have a plus b is equal to 1, right? And let me just write this down again. First equation, we will have a plus b equals to 1. And let me put it down like this, right? And then for the second equation, we just have to deal with these two numbers. And let me put down these numbers in front, right? So we will have that, which is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 times a, and then this is plus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 times b, and this is equal to 1. And if you look at this, I can say let's eliminate a first. And to do that, we can just multiply the first equation by that, but negative of that. So negative, and let's put on parentheses around it. Negative parentheses 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, and I'll put this down right here as well negative, so I'll just put down negative right here, and then 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, and at the end multiply by negative 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, like that, right? All right, so you see this and that will cancel each other out. This right here, you have a negative in front, and they do have a uh, same denominator, so I can put that down on the bottom first, right? You have negative 1 minus square root of 5, so let's put that down like this. After you distribute that, and then this is the positive version, so you have plus 1 minus square root of 5, because that was originally a minus already. And this is, in the parentheses, multiplied by b, and this is equal to the following. 1 is still 1, so let's put that down. 
1 times this is just that, but let me write it down as negative 1. And let's put the fraction separately, right? So negative 1 over 2. Let's just put it down right here. And then negative square root of 5 over 2, right? So just combine terms. Okay, so as you can see right here, negative 1, negative 1 cancel. Negative square root of 5, negative square root of 5, that's negative 2 square root of 5 over 2 times b equals to 1 minus 1 half, just 1 half, positive this time. And then we have the minus square root of 5 over 2. And you see this and that can be cancelled there. And of course, b is going to be, we can just divide both sides, right, by this number. So I would put that down like this, 1 over negative square root of 5. And since they both have the same denominator, so I'll put this down right here, all over 2. On the top, we have 1 minus square root of 5. So this right here is the b value. And to get the a value, we pretty much do the same thing, but eliminate b instead, right? So I'll do that right here for you guys, because I have another board. <laughs> so anyway. Right here, we know we have a plus b equals to 1. And a right here wants with the 1 plus square root of 5. Oh. That. Okay, so this is pretty much all we need. And now let me remind you guys Fn, this is equal to a times something to the nth power, and this was r1. r1 was 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the nth power plus b times 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the nth power. And now we have the a, b values already. A is this, so we see this is 1 over square root of 5 times this. And notice that this is the same as that, isn't it? So I can just put this down, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Well, we have this times that, and this has n power, so altogether we can just put it down as n plus 1 power. How cool is this, right? Plus for the b, and if you look at the b value, First of all, it's minus. So, and then by the way, this is pretty much the same thing, but it's a minus here. We have the minus here. So let me just erase this to be a minus. And we have one over square root of five as well. And once again, this and that are the same. So first power and the same base, which is the nth power when you multiply them, it's going to be 1 minus square root of 5, the base stays the same, all over 2. And then this is raised to the n plus 1 power. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the nth term formula, only based on n for the Fibonacci sequence. And this works for n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, because we begin with n is equal to 0, right? So now, this right here is it.